The list of symptoms that Dr. Havis and Dr. Bray described are all reported and documented. If you're wondering how this could have happened, it was predicted years ago by the cell phone companies themselves. On the C4ST website, you can find links to the warnings published by the manufacturers of the cell phones in all of your pockets right now. All of them advise you not to touch it while using it, and some specifically say not to carry it in a breast pocket or near the abdomen of a pregnant woman or a teenager. Unfortunately, those warnings are so small or buried inside the settings of your phone that most people never see them. We can't pretend that the convenience of having this technology is without cost, especially when the manufacturers of every cell phone are already admitting the danger in fine print. The wireless 5G world that Dr. Havis has just described, one with enough constant radiation to run a city full of driverless cars, can actually be considered trespassing and a theft of a right to a healthy life. When we wonder if something is harmful, we look to the authorities to determine that things are safe for us. In 2011, the World Health Organization, through the International Agency for Research on Cancer, classified radio frequency radiation, that the blanket name for the type of signal employed by cell phones, cell towers, and Wi-Fi, to be a class 2B possible carcinogen. That means there is enough firm and reliable scientific evidence to state that wireless radiation may give you cancer. One of the scientists involved in reviewing that classification was Anthony Miller, who is a professor emeritus at the University of Toronto. In the past, Dr. Miller ha has worked as a national health scientist for the Canadian government and has been awarded the Medal of Honor by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. Dr. Miller is here today to bring you up to date on what scientists in his field are discovering about wireless radiation. Dr. Miller. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Frank. Uh, as Frank said, I was associated with the International Agency for Research on Cancer that recommended the World, or the World Health Organization, list all radio frequency radiation that is the radiation that powers cell phones and Wi-Fi, including Wi-Fi, as a possible carcinogen. The classification was officially designated as 2B. 2B is a list of possible carcinogens that also includes lead and DDT. That was back in 2011. This classification was based on the epidemiology and uh, other evidence that was available then. But since then, a lot has changed. New science has emerged, both human and animal. Human, by new analyses of some of the studies that were performed before, including the Canadian participation in what was called Interphone, new updated analyses of the studies in Sweden, Sweden being one of the first countries to introduce cell phones and therefore having people with the longest exposure and they have demonstrated that the longer exposure, the greater the risk. But equally important, there have been two very large animal carcinogenicity studies. Now we learnt more than 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I was involved in some of this in Canada, that we should not allow companies to introduce new chemicals without them first being tested for the possibility of carcinogenicity. There is every reason why such a requirement should be placed on companies that propose to introduce new radiation which will expose all of us. The two studies that have been conducted in the last f uh, 10 years, but reported only last years, were one by the National Toxicology Program in the United States, a very large animal study, and another by this prestigious Ramazzini Institute in Italy. And both of them showed that prolonged exposure to radio frequency radiation increases the risk of cancer. And indeed, they also showed that the cancers are similar to some of the cancers that are being observed in humans, and they showed that this sort of radiation increases the damage to our DNA 
And if our DNA is damaged, then our risk of cancer increases substantially. Many scientists, including myself, now believe that the evidence is such that if IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, were to reevaluate radiofrequency radiation, it would be placed in class one, i.e. a human carcinogen. And governments could not possibly ignore that. In fact, fortunately for us, the, an advisory committee, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, has recommended that radiofrequency radiation be re-evaluated with high priority. So we're hoping this will occur very shortly. In the meantime, we all must take care. We all must recognize that we are being exposed to radiofrequency radiation. We must do our best through our MPPs, through our discussions with the municipality to prevent the introduction of 5G, which will only make matters worse. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miller.